All right, everybody, let's play No Man's Sky. I'm Captain BP with the Game Vault, and this is our brand new 2023 series starting from scratch with a brand new character on the normal mode. Everything's locked in on just the basic normal settings. It's going to operate as kind of like a, uh, a quick start guide as well as just a regular guide to all the different missions and all that fun stuff. So let's get to it right away and start um, farming some goodies. So that's definitely the first thing you need to do. We don't really need salt, but salt is valuable. So we'll grab some. Uh, we got nothing for a scanner, so let's go take a look at what we need to fix on ourselves first. Um, yeah, our starship's busted up. Our multi-tool, we need to fix the scanner, so we're going to need some ferrite dust for that. And I think I found some. We'll go ahead and grab as much of that as we can. These episodes, we're going to run them about 40 minutes or so, roughly. Somewhere around 30, 40 minutes. Uh, a little longer, a little shorter if the subject matter warrants it. All right, we don't want to run out of uh, carbon, so we're going to head up here. Hopefully some of this is carbon. That's ferrite dust, wow. Well, we got plenty now. Let's go ahead and repair our scanner. And bingo. So we can do a little quick scan like that. We're going to have to gather some of this up while we're here. Always recommend getting dihydrogen right off the bat. Um, ferrite dust, carbon, oxygen. But we're going to need uh, no analysis visor. Yeah, we're going to need some carbon. Here we go. All right, these plants are carbon. Thank goodness. Getting a little concerned now. I was like, wait a minute. Where's all the carbon? grab a little more salt just for the heck of it. Like I said, it does have some value. Being that we're on our first planet, salt will come big time handy. All right, so the analysis visor, we need carbon nanotubes. We're going to go ahead and get that installed. Let's go over to our inventory and see if we can make a nanotube yet. Nope, need a little more carbon. We're going to get as much as we can. All right, let's go ahead and get that installed. Oops, keep forgetting to make the nanotube first. There we go. Nanotube is done. And the analysis visor is fixed. Now we can go find our ship. Is that away? In the meantime, we're going to look for some oxygen on the way, as well as some sodium. Um, and we do that by pushing in the L3 button, which will start scanning for us. Oh, there's the oxygen over here. I'm so used to starting these damn permadeath things from my permadeath. Oh, wow, there's a lot of oxygen here. We'll take it off. Um, yeah, for my permadeath character, and then that recent expedition was a permadeath one with everything was a little, you know, most everything was set on harder settings, so it was kind of a crazy way to start off. This is going to be a bloody breeze. Now, if this is your first playthrough, this will be a big help. If it's not your first playthrough, well, you know, you know all this crap. We've done this a million times, right? But sometimes it's fun just to uh, join in somebody's little adventure, hang out for a little bit. So tell me down in the comments how uh, how much No Man's Sky have you played? Is this uh, old hat to you? Is this your first time getting into the game? Or have you just dabbled in it and got away from it like so many people did? Oh boy, we got a distance to go and we are running out of protection. But 
we got some uh, sodium over here. You can see the NA right there. See it? There's some more there. There's some more over there. All right, good. So we got a little bit. We'll be able to bolster ourselves a little bit. Uh, can I make the terrain manipulator? I can. I almost wonder if I should right now. Two carbon nanotubes, huh? Well. Yeah, thermal protection's falling quick. Let's see if we can get lucky. Get some sodium out of here. There's some oxygen. Life support gel, that's cool. Maybe get an ion battery. Condensed carbon. There's some sodium. What the heck? There's fire. Really not a lot of carbon here, huh? All right, here we go. Get some more. All right, so how many nanotubes can I make? One. Yeah, that leaves me four carbon. That is not good. I do not recommend letting yourself get down four carbon. Because of that. All right, we refilled it a little bit. All right, yeah, we're going to go to our ship. Forget that. Uh, I was going to grab those resources, but I honestly don't think we can do it right now. I just think it'll slow us down too much. All right. You always start off so slow in these things. You can't run for long. You can't rocket pack for long. Your uh, multi-tool sucks. Everything sucks. It's just awful. Once I get to the anomaly, things will change drastically because I've got tons of stuff unlocked um, through several different things. One of them being the uh, um, Quicksilver things, but I've got some Twitch rewards and I also have some Expedition rewards. So all that will be a big help. Now, whenever you find your ship the first time, you're always going to come across... What the hell's hitting me? some oxygen-rich plants. You see that? Something was hitting me. So you want to make sure you grab them. There's always four of them right next to your ship. And we always get this guy right here. Blah, blah, blah. He talks to us. Starts us on our path. I'm going to have to go get a cool look for our uh, character here once we uh, get going. Alright, got that. Search for some more goodies here. Grab that crappy rusty metal, because it turns into ferrite dust, which is very much priceless. Early game, at least. Alright, we didn't have to use any sodium. If we jump into our ship, you'll see our um, shields will go back up, which is great. All right, so I need pure ferrite, dihydrogen jelly for the launch thruster. And the way we get that is, well, the pure ferrite, at least, is going to be through a portable refiner. But the first thing we need to do is make some metal plating so we can build that. So there we go. Get the metal plating, drop it down. Go ahead and put the ferrite dust in there. We got enough, 67. I think we only needed 50, right? And we'll give it some... Uh, yeah, we'll give it the condensed carbon. All right, and now we're going to go ahead and just gather some more materials real quick because we really need them. A little more carbon, a little more ferrite dust. And we're not being smart. What we should be doing is this. Scanning stuff as we're going along to make a couple bucks. Yeah, it's early game. You don't get much, but... A few hundred nanites can make a big difference. Especially early game. So 
Oh, see? Not only that, but if there's something that has two elements in it, like this has ferrite dust and dihydrogen, well, we're going to double up on them when we harvest them. So definitely a benefit to doing that. As you can see, we're getting low on carbon again, so continue to gather that up. Carbon, carbon, and carbon. Salt and ferrite dust, that's good. Now back before waypoint. Oh, a little bit of salt, a little bit of oxygen. You're on your way to being a rich man. Ooh, chromatic metal. That's interesting. I'll take it because we definitely need that stuff pretty early game. And we're not going to get much, especially with this piece of crap gun. Yeah, look at that, we're getting like one. It's not even worth the time. All right. Let's head back down to the ship and let's grab our goodies here. Oh, yeah, we needed a dihydrogen jelly too, if I'm not mistaken. So. We'll go into our suit, and I think it only takes 50 to make that. 40. Perfect. All right, so we got that. Empty out our refiner. And don't forget to pick it back up. Don't leave it. It's kind of expensive to make, and if you leave it behind, you get a little screwed. So now we need a hermetic seal and another metal plating. Both of those we should be able to make. Yep, hermetic seal, condensed carbon 30. And we got more ferrite dust. So let's go ahead and get these two things popping. And look at that, we're ready to rock and roll and get into our ship. And we've only been playing it side about 12 minutes. So bada bing, let's go. Let us get the hell out of here. Shade Dionysus found this system. Alright, I gotta fly third person. I used to prefer playing it in first person, but I think it makes better videos in third, so we'll keep it that way, but the ship itself being inside that cockpit is so restrictive, it's not even funny. So we'll go to our log. This is what we have. Install the terrain manipulator, the exploration guide, and the space anomaly. So we can summon the space anomaly, but we're going to go to the space station first. I disabled the tutorial on this, and if you are playing for the first time, keep the tutorial on. It helps you out a little bit. It, it, it does drag. But it only takes a little while to get through it, only a, an hour or so, roughly. You're off the planet anyway fairly quick, but it could be a bit of a challenge early on. Um, but I do recommend it if it's your first time playing. If this is a second, third, fourth, hundredth uh, start, then go ahead and just disable the damn thing because you don't need the aggravation. As you can see, I didn't have to, like run to my ship in a heated storm and you know all that aggravation and you know you have just enough time to get there and it get you know it's just far enough away and all that that you can do it safely but it's still just a monstrous pain in the ass and I can't stand it so we'll go ahead and talk to three guys up here real quick oh we can talk to people right away that's cool all right, well, let's go ahead and get a couple words. Um, oh, look, we can get one from everybody. Got one from a geck. Then we get one from a Viking here. Perfect. 
And now we'll head over to one of the most important guys in every space station. That's this fella right here, the mission agent. We'll see what kind of missions he has to offer. Anything that requires the killing of creatures, I recommend. Stack them up. You don't have to do them right away. But just get them. Everything's giving us exo suit upgrade uh, charts right now, which is cool because we really want to upgrade our exo suit and make it bigger. It's just going to take some time. It's kind of a nice looking ship. We're not going to worry about finding any ships right away. Um, we are. Now, I could flood myself with money by collecting all my Twitch rewards and all that, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to play this uh, pretty straight. Later on, once I have a lot of money and all that, and it really doesn't matter, I'll go ahead and do that just to clean that crap up. But I will get all the cosmetic stuff that I earned through Quicksilver and all that, titles and banners and um, Starship Trails, all that kind of fun stuff. Because that's just too cool to customize your character and your ship, you know, at least a little bit. Not finding any nav data around here, but that's okay. Might be some over here. Yep, there we go. Nanites? Alright, well, we'll take the nanites. And we got a nav data. Perfect. You know what we'll do with that, actually? Is we're going to immediately trade that in because we want to get an emergency map from the cartographer here. Definitely one of the first things you want to do. Let's exchange the chart. And we're going to get this one here, the red one. Emergency cartographic data. Hopefully that will give us a ship that we can rescue and trade in for a few bucks early on. It's a great way to make money early on. Every time you get one of those little charts, go for it. I'm going to show you how to get unlimited amounts of those as soon as I can. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at the rest of this system. So we got a parched planet, which sucks. Especially for early on for us. Scalding planet, which sucks. What this is a barren planet, which sucks. He's hot in this system. I already looked at this one, right? Yeah, this is the parched planet. Where's the other one? I did see another planet around here. Oh, this one's cold, right? Yeah, a frozen planet. That sucks too. Alright, so let's... Oh, there's one more planet in this system. Or actually two. Well, we saw one. We saw the parched. We saw that one. We saw that one. Oh, that's irradiated. This must be the frozen one. And then there's that one. All right, where is the ring? There's the ring. Parts, right? Yeah. Barren. Scalding. Parched. Scalding. Irradiated. Frozen and barren. Okay, we got them all. Really not a great selection. Hell, I don't even know where to go first. Alright, well let's go do something real quick here. We're just going to gather a little tritium up. Gold and silver. Maybe some tritium hyperclusters. we have enough, enough fuel for this uh, ship to zip around in for a little while at least. And the silver and gold is useful. Early game it can be uh, turned into a little bit of money, but 
Ah. All right. So yeah, we got a little bit of gold, a little bit of silver, decent amount of tritium, so we can definitely fly for a while. Uh, we'll stay off the frozen planet. Where's that parched one? Or the dead one, whatever. The barren one. All right, let's go to the barren planet. Why not, right? What we'll do is we'll search for a ship down here. Um, let's see what our uh, log is. Yeah, install the terrain manipulator. Yeah, we got two of those. Maybe we'll get creatures here. If we have creatures here, we'll go ahead and um, try and kill them off real quick. Kill 13 of them off. Because those uh, missions stack, so we don't have to kill 26. We only have to kill 13. That will be a good way to get a couple exosuit maps which will bring us to drop pods which we can then um, go ahead and fix and gain slots on our exosuit which is very important especially uh, any part of the game but early game it's just so restrictive on how small the exosuit is and how few slots you have you can fill up pretty quick and your initial ship oh this is awful Yeah, this is a very mountainous planet. And I'm going to tell you from experience, until you have a decent exosuit, that is a very bad idea. So we're going to go back to this planet here. I think this was the parched one. Right behind the space station. We'll hop off there real quick and, and mess around because getting on a planet with a terrain like that is just an exercise in frustration you're gonna have to struggle to get back to your ship and with very little um fuel launch thruster see that we're gonna need to make launch fuel just to get off the damn ground again so it's gonna be uh, yeah it's not fun not fun so you wouldn't be able to summon a ship to yourself and then take off you'd have to fuel it up first and then summon it to be able to use it and that's not fun now I didn't check can we make two nanotubes yeah we can so I can go ahead and get that done at least what do we got here Trade frequency. No, we're not going to trade with you, buddy. Not yet, at least. So, once I get to the anomaly, there's a couple things I'm going to do. Uh, first and foremost, I'm going to calculate out how many nanites and salvaged um, data modules I'm going to need to get myself started up in a way in which I want to get started up. Because, let me tell you, it's uh, a good start is very important. I'm also going to cash in all of my... Uh, that's pyrite. I thought I had a terrain map. Oh, derp. Yeah, I need a dihydrogen jelly, and I'm sure I can't make another one, right? Yeah, because I'm way short. Alright, let's find some dihydrogen real quick. Some right down here. And a little oxygen. Perfect. Now, I always say this when you're starting off. Dihydrogen can be made into dihydrogen jelly in your inventory, and then you can put it in the refiner and refine it back to dihydrogen, and you will net more dihydrogen than you used. You know, you use 40 to make it in your inventory, you get 50 when you break it down. 
so that's good. These nasty plants and get a little extra oxygen. Because oxygen is very important. Let's scan a couple of things real quick. The nice thing too is that um, the hydrogen jelly breaks down really, really fast into the hydrogen. Not the other way around though, you know. So when it takes you 40 in your inventory to make it, it only takes 30 in uh, the refiner. But like I said, it's just not not really worth it because of how um, how long it takes. Now later on in the game, hell yeah, it's definitely worth it. Where's my ship? And what's that? Organic rock. That could be somewhat valuable. Hmm. All right, well, let's go ahead and make a dihydrogen jelly. We can go ahead and grab a little pyrite while we're here. What's pyrite good for? Fuel on the ship. So all that tritium I just got, I'm not really going to need to worry about it for, or get more for a while because of this. This stuff is great. Anytime you can get a hold of some pyrite, get it. You can set up a base for pyrite, do it. You know what, that might be a smart thing to do right now, is to set up a base on this planet right away. At least establish a foothold on it and gather some uh, salvaged data modules so we can maybe, maybe start mining some of this stuff. I'll we'll have to look at that. We can use the autonomous mining units. The only problem is those aren't very great. They don't last uh, a long, long time, and you got to power them with copper. I'd rather get the real ones and find a real deposit that we can mine, but that's going to require a lot more. That's going to require some nanites and whatnot, so yeah, we'll just let it go for now. I'm just thinking out loud here, trying to get a jump on things, but I honestly don't think that, that would be worth it, at least not that early on in the game. We'd have to do too much scrambling to uh, make it work. All right, let's check out these organic rocks and see what these things do. We need a hazmat gauntlet for them. Damn it! <laughs> All right. Hop back on our ship. We will throw this pyrite onto the ship since that's what it's for, fueling up. Let me get this. What is that? Got some dihydrogen for that. Okay. Uh, next up, we want a warp drive so we can leave this system. That's going to require chromatic metal and microprocessors. Well, we all know chromatic metal we get from refining copper as well as other metals in um, the refinery. And we got a copper deposit about 500 away. That's not too shabby. So let's go ahead and grab some uh, copper. And we'll need a decent amount of it because we're also going to want it for uh, creating the antimatter to create the uh, actual warp core itself. A little condensed carbon while we're here. Just as good as regular carbon. Well, almost. You see that? I see a buried technology module over here. We're going to go ahead and grab that while we're on our way to the copper. Just try to maximize what we're doing here, you know what I mean? I'll switch that terrain manipulator, get down in there. What do we get? Four salvage data out of one. That's awesome. 
It's really good. That's the most you can get. All right. And this is pyrite, I believe, here. Whoops. The hell did I do there? Oh, man. Yeah, it's more pyrite. I guess I could. I could grab a little bit more. Why not? We're here. It's a lot less time than before we have to worry about getting any fuel. And pyrite can also be broken down in the refiner into something much more basic. I don't remember what. It might be carbon or something like that. I, nah, I don't think it's carbon. I don't remember. It's not really a, a good use for it, so yeah, don't get it for that. But for fuel, priceless. Not having to worry about uh, going through an asteroid field for a while, priceless. Yeah, I was getting worried there. I knew we were running low on spots. Alright, it's cold out, but we're doing decent. We're surviving. Here's that copper. Oh, blessed copper. Alright, so to fill this up, we can use ferrite dust or any type of ferrite. I always use the silicate powder because you get that as you are mining. Just like a byproduct as you're getting the dirt and rock from around whatever you're mining. It's not highly useful. You don't use it for a lot of things, mainly for building stone structures and one or two other little things but I mean yeah for the most part use it for, to uh, repower your terrain manipulator you will not regret it the ferrite is too precious early game to use for that now late game when you've got tons of resources and there's no worries or even mid game ferrite dust is nothing you can go into any space station and buy it you know the early game oh yeah all right so got a bunch of that it's pyrite 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 Manufacturing facility. Yeah, we're not ready to mess with anything like that, but oh, look at this. We'll take it. Thank you, thank you. Give me all the dihydrogen. Heading back to our ship. And along the way, we're just going to gather stuff up because we need it. Actually, we're getting kind of cold. Oh boy, fell in a hole. Here we go. Look at that plant, that's kind of nice. As I destroy it. Look at that, it's beautiful. Let's turn it into carbon. Same with this one. Oh, they're the last two on the planet. Well, golly. Big batch of oxygen out there, I can see. Right over there to the left of my ship and behind it. Yeah, one of those, damn it. No hazmat gloves. Okay, I get it. Oh, here's some more of this. Let's grab it. Close enough to the ship that we're not really in any danger. And 
if we die, eh, we're not in permadeath at least. Man, that last expedition. The first death was on purpose, you know, because it said you had to die. When you're playing permadeath, that goes against, like, everything, you know, that you believe in, but what the hell. Okay. Crazy. Second death was the worst. The third death really got me. <laughs> I was like, what? Thank God it was part of the story. All right, let's land here. Wanted to bring the ship here. So we can get lots of good stuff around one of these places. Including navigational data. Oh, look at that. We got a microprocessor. All right, I think we have to shoot our way into this place. And I honestly don't know if I want to engage the Sentinels in that way, but what have we got to lose? A mining beam won't even work. Never mind. Thought a mining beam worked. Can I install a bolt caster? Chromatic metal and carbon nanotubes. Forget it. Not right now. All right. So what we will do, however, is throw this puppy down. We will throw some copper into it. I got a decent amount. And we will slap that in there and we will go to town. It'll take about two minutes for that almost. In the meantime, let's go ahead and consolidate some stuff and break some stuff down like these geodes, these crystal fragments. Um, this can go on the ship. That can go on the ship for now. Put that on the ship and that on the ship. I got some bullets, that's cool. Anything that's not a basic resource. And then I, I always have to kind of organize my resources in a way that makes sense to me. It's my thing. <laughs> so, you know, judge me, judge me not, whatever, I don't care. I have to have at least some kind of sense made out of the way they're laid out. Otherwise, it just makes me crazy. And it does help me when I'm looking for something, especially if I've got a ton of resources. You know, it makes it a little easier to look through it. I don't color code it. I know some people probably color code it. Some people probably put it in order of the periodic table. Others might do it now. I, better, I don't know. Whatever. Me, I just, I have a certain method to them with like some of my most used ones on the upper left hand portion of my inventory. And then the rest of them are just kind of laid out in a way that makes sense to me. I used to carry them around in my backpack, you know, my cargo hold on my uh, character. But once they did away with that, I found better ways to haul around all those goods. And I'll show you when we get to that point. We are nowhere near that point yet. All right, so back on the ship now. We're going to need three more microprocessors, so what we'll do is we'll head back up to the space station to get those. We're lucky to find two of them. That was kind of cool. Um, so, yeah, we'll go up here to the space station and get two more, or three more. Build that hyperdrive. And, oh, here comes a transmission. This begins a new a new set of missions. And that is awakenings. Okay. So we got some coordinates to follow for that. But first things first. 
we are definitely getting. Those microprocessors. I hope we can afford them, actually. They're kind of expensive. But we got a couple things we could pawn off if we need to early game. I'll sell resources early game to get what I need. Uh, oh, yeah, look at that. Ooh. So I need 82,000. Yikes. I have 3,000. I don't have anything close to it. 20, 43. All right, well, yeah, we are not getting a hyperdrive right now. Not yet, at least. And that's okay. What we are going to do is head to the anomaly. Because that's where the action is going to be. What's cool is once we get here, there's a lot you can do here. Um, but, like, you change the look of your character and all that. You can do that at any space station, but then you can always buy stuff using um, your salvage data units as well as nanites, upgrades, stuff for your base, all kinds of goodies. Um, if you've got any Quicksilver, you can spend it up here with this guy. Twitch rewards, expedition rewards, all that kind of stuff right here with this guy um, and it carries on between different characters so if you've got a character that unlocked everything in the Quicksilver I'll show you I've unlocked pretty much everything in the Quicksilver um, menu right so when I go in here I'll go to not owned but you see how everything is available for the most part fireworks or not because you can buy multiples of them same with the myth beacons Void eggs, you can get multiples of those. There's some more fireworks, but everything else is available, and you know I'm going to cash it all in. Because why shouldn't I? But we're also going to give ourselves a pretty cool look here so that we stand out from the crowd, but we're going to have to wait till after that. I'm going to get up here real quick. figure out how many nanites I'm going to need to get the uh, Atlas Pass level 1. So just 250 nanites. That's not bad. Uh, we're already on our way to that. But we also need something from in here. Scroll through till we find it. Uh, nope. Mm, I don't think it's in here either. Decorative. Don't believe it's decorative. Might be in here. Yeah, barrel fabricator. So to get to that, I'm going to need um, one, two, three. I can get to that already. So we can go ahead. Whoops. One. My bad. Two. Three and four. All right, so we can make the barrel fabricator. That is good. Very important, very useful. That's going to come massively in handy. And with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of No Man's Sky. As always, I'm Captain Beefy with the Game Vault, and I thank you for joining me. If you enjoyed this at all, please leave a like on the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'll be back with more episodes as we take this guy from the very beginnings, these humble beginnings with this crappy ship and this oddly gross pink 
bodysuit and we make him into something awesome. Um, off camera, I'm going to gather all the Quicksilver crap because that takes a while and it's just annoying. You don't need to see all that. And we'll pick it up right after that, basically, as we head on out to the next step of our adventure. So I'll see you next time, guys. Until then, peace.